Hello, this is a quick video to explain immunity to conducted disturbances testing. This is specifically the ENIEC 61000-4-6 specification that pretty much all electrical devices uh, will need to pass if uh, you want uh, CE certification. So I'm going to give a a description of the test as I understand it and a inexpensive method to uh, perform this test at, in your home lab or at work before you start spending the big bucks at the certified testing laboratory. Okay, here is the block diagram of the conducted immunity test. Um, I guess pro I probably need to state that I would not call myself an expert uh, with this system or this uh, test, but uh, I have uh, gone through this test probably a couple of dozen times at uh, some local compliance labs. So here's the setup. Basically consists of a function generator and this function generator needs to be able to uh, sweep the range between 150 kilohertz to 80 megahertz. It also needs to be able to modulate the signal at 1 kilohertz AM, uh, with AM modulation. There needs to be a power amplifier and then the uh, uh, specification uh, notes that you must have a 6 dB attenuator in line before you drive your coupling clamp. Um, this is a critical piece of the system in that this uh, stabilizes the output of the power amplifier, uh, presents a more stable impedance to the uh, amplifier. However, uh, it is a 6 dB attenuator, so your voltage coming out of here going to your clamp will be half the voltage or um, if you're thinking of power, uh, your amplifier uh, has to be 4x the power if, when this guy goes in circuit. I should note that there's three different types of uh, ways of injecting the, uh, this signal onto your system. There's a CDN, a coupling-decoupling network, the bulk coupling uh, system, and an EM clamp. Uh, I'm illustrating the bulk coupling uh, because uh, that's to me is the easiest to use. It might have might not have the most uh, uh, repeatable results like a CDN, but uh, it's easier and lower cost. So you can see the amplifier, I mean, the function generator drives the amp, goes to the attenuator, goes to this uh, bulk coupling clamp, and I sh I'm showing one loop through and uh, the specification notes that uh, the typical impedance is 150 ohms. And so I have my scope attached across the 150 ohm load, single turn through the toroid to measure my voltages. The specification uh, notes three levels, level one, two, and three, which correspond to one volt, three volt, and 10 volts. Uh, that need to be induced onto this uh, 150 ohm load. Um, now this is the steady state. However, it needs to be modulated um, with an 80% increase. And so if you're desiring three volts, you really need to be able to accommodate 5.4 volts. Um, I uh, in almost all of the gear that I have ever tested, the certification laboratory is always tested to this level two. Uh, and that level two kind of uh, corresponds to residential, commercial, light, industrial type of electronics. Uh, I am using a uh, Regal uh, power function generator, a DG4102, and it is capable of doing this frequency range and it is also capable of doing the modulation. However, it cannot sweep automatically at the same time as doing the amplitude modulation. So I'm going to set it up for uh, set it up for modulation and then manually uh, via the knob sweep uh, the frequencies. 
Um, this RF power amplifier I purchased off of eBay for $105. It's uh, rated um, for like 100 kilohertz up to 30 megahertz and uh, it's usable up to almost 40 megahertz. So with this system I'm not able to achieve the 80 megahertz top end but I am able to get from say 150 to 40 megahertz and it is uh, you know a decent frequency response and if you wanted to level out you know make that frequency response even more even you could computer control uh, the function generator and do a pre-test and note how much power you need to put out at each frequency. In fact the specification states that you need to do that. Um, but uh, I've done a pre-sweep, pre-scan and I'm just trying to do some general uh, pre-compliance tests. So that's mostly the test and as you can see here uh, I've paid about 105 bucks for the amplifier this uh, attenuator I purchased on eBay for 20 bucks and uh, the clamp which I'll show a little bit later on I also made and it was about $25 for the hardware and then I had a 3D uh, sh 3D printed shell made for it so I'm roughly about $180 into this setup and uh, it gives a fairly close approximation of the uh, actual test We'll start at the clamp because this is what uh, took me the most time to figure out. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, these are a couple of thousand dollars if you buy the certified calibrated uh, clamps. Um, this is a uh, toroid core it's a, that's uh, cut in half and uh, I just bought several low frequency cores and uh, experimented with them and found one that uh, seemed to work pretty well. And this is just a 3D printed uh, design that I worked, worked on. So uh, I have the input is one of these BNC connectors. Actually these BNC connectors are in parallel so I can just mod easily power one side and look at uh, what's going in. This is the 6dB through uh, inline attenuator. The amplifier, the 5 to 6 watt power amp. Input side is with the LED, the output side is with the power connection. and. Um, I mentioned that because I couldn't find it anywhere on their website where they actually specified the input and output sides. I took it apart briefly to uh, uh, look at how it's constructed. And then we have the, the Regal function generator which is feeding this guy. The RF power amplifier's maximum input is 15 volts, which I have it set to. And uh, you can see here that uh, that I'm drawing just uh, a little under 10 watts. And this is at uh, 1 megahertz. Here are my settings for the uh, Regal function generator. Uh, currently I'm set at 1 megahertz, 50 ohm output impedance, and I'm set at 45 millivolts. I can set up the, uh, the modulation. My source is internal. I'm AM and I want to go down to a depth of 80 and I'm set for 1 kilohertz. I uh, don't know if I mentioned, but I can either sweep or I can amplitude modulate. I can't do both at the same time. So I'm going to set up the amplitude modulation and I'm going to manually sweep the signal. Okay, we're set back to 1 megahertz. Here's what the signal looks like. 
across the 150 ohm load. You can see that I am amplitude modulating. I'll turn off the modulation. And there's my steady state signal of just under 6 volts. I'll go back to modulation. And I'll increase the frequency response here. And you can see that my frequency response does fall slightly. And that could be compensated for easily uh, you know, using a control loop via a computer. Here's uh, 30 megahertz. And there's 40 megahertz. And so, you know, 35, 40 megahertz maybe is the uh, top end of this uh, amplifier. But uh, you can see it works. And it does work all the way down to 150 kilohertz. That's back to one megahertz. Okay, so that's the test. So for about approximately $200, you uh, should be able to simulate this test. Uh, that's assuming you have a power supply and a function generator. And uh, before you spend the big money at the certified laboratory, uh, if you do this test beforehand, you should feel pretty comfortable that uh, you are going to pass this test, specifically the immunity to conducted disturbances. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, if you like this, uh, hit the subscribe button. Thanks.